This video will guide you through the setup procedure for the FDG series of clamp-on gas flow meters. Three important topics will be covered in this video. First, what are the requirements for stable and accurate detection? Second, what is the proper installation procedure? And third, how to correctly set up the sensor after it has been installed. Let's start by reviewing the requirements that need to be met to ensure stable and accurate detection of gas flow. Make sure that the piping that you are using is a type of piping that is compatible with the FDG series. Compatible materials consist of iron, stainless steel, and aluminum. Make sure the outer diameter of the piping and the thickness of the piping are within specification. You can check this via the specs page in every FDG document or online at keyance.com. This is shown on the screen now. Please note that one model can be used on multiple sizes of pipe. Also note that there are two types of FDG models per size one that ends in an L at the end of the part number, and one that does not. The part numbers that end in L are built for piping with thinner wall thicknesses, as you can see reflected by the specifications. Make sure the pressure inside the pipe the FDG is clamped onto is at least 58 PSI at all times. If the pressure inside of the pipe drops below 58 PSI, it becomes possible that the FDG will lose stability of its flow rate reading. Make sure that you are installing the FDG on a clean pipe. If there is excess rust or dirt on the surface, this could cause the ultrasonic waves the sensor uses for detection to behave incorrectly. Make sure that there is no liquid drainage present inside of the pipe. If there is, it can cause the ultrasonic waves that the FDG uses for detection to behave incorrectly. Make sure you are mounting the FDG to a section of uninterrupted straight piping that meets the lengths described in this chart. The length L refers to the distance from the middle of the FDG unit you are installing to the first junction in the pipe, which could be a flange, branch, valve, or threading, for example. As you can see, the distance L that you must satisfy depends on the size of the pipe that you are clamping the FDG on to. L-min describes the minimum length of straight uninterrupted piping you must have in order for the FDG to have stable detection with the use of additional damping material. L-max is the minimum length of straight uninterrupted piping where you no longer need to use any additional damping material to obtain that stable detection. In summary, the damping material is a very important part of the FDG system. If you are having any issues with stability and you are not using any damping material, that's probably the step that you need to take is to get damping material on the pipe, despite being above the LMAX requirement. In some niche situations, we've even had to double the amount of damping material that we use on the pipe to ensure stable operation at all times. Make sure there are no sources of ultrasonic noise near the FDG. The most common example is mounting the FDG directly after a compressor. This can cause some ultrasonic noise or pulsations from the compressor to be detected by the FDG. Instead, mounting it after a receiver tank can help cut out all of this noise and lead to better detection. Make sure the velocity that the gas moves with inside of the pipe doesn't go above 15 meters per second. It's difficult to phrase the specification of 15 meters per second into a flow rate since the amount of gas you're flowing will vary as the pressure inside of your system varies. But you can use the chart on the screen to get a general idea of the max standard cubic feet per minute with respect to each pipe size and a few common pressures inside of the system. Now let's move on to the physical installation procedure for the FDG clamp-on gas flow meter. If you have a full setup in front of you, you should see a few different parts. This includes the main unit itself, which consists of a sensing element, the display, and a mounting bracket. The main unit's damping material, which consists of a rubber sheet 
and a bracket to mount the rubber to the pipe underneath the main sensing unit, and then additional upstream or downstream damping material, which also consists of a rubber sheet and a bracket to mount that rubber to the pipe, but it goes upstream or downstream of that main sensing unit. Again, whether or not you are using additional damping material will depend on the length of uninterrupted straight piping that the FTG is being mounted on, according to the chart on the screen. The specific installation procedure of the FTG you have varies depending on the model that you ordered, but the order in which you perform the steps is always going to be the same. First, install the main unit damping material which includes the rubber sheet and its bracket, and then install the main sensor's mounting bracket, followed up by the main sensor itself. Finally, attach any additional upstream or downstream damping material that you're using. Next, we're going to take a look at an installation example for the FTG on a one inch pipe. We'll be using two sets of upstream and downstream damping material, and then the main unit and the main unit's damping material. First, start with the damping material sheet and strap it around the pipe. You know that it's the main unit damping material by the cutouts. We'll take a closer look at the strapping process for that damping material because it is important that it's tightly strapped onto the pipe. Start at one end, pull it tight, and then work your way down onto the other end. I'll rotate the pipe here just so you can get a look at the cutouts because it's important for when you are installing the metal bracket that keeps the damping material pressed against the pipe. Whenever you put the metal bracket on, make sure that you're paying attention to the cutouts in the bracket and the cutouts in the damping material itself. Next, I'm just going to fit the screws into their slots. And here I'll give you a look at those screws. They're not tightened yet, but this just keeps it in place so that I can align the bracket with the damping material and then tighten when I'm ready. Make sure that you tighten each screw adequately because it's very important for the stability of the FTG's measurement. Next, we'll attach the main sensing unit's bracket. What you wanna pay attention to is that the top of the main sensing unit's bracket has two tabs that stick out and they fit into the notches on the damping materials bracket. As you tighten the screws for the main sensing units bracket, pay attention that the tabs don't slip out of the notches because if they do, you'll have improper alignment. Again, just make sure that all four screws are adequately tight. If you're using an electric screwdriver, you might need to go back with a hand tool and tighten up the screws. After we're happy with the main sensing unit's bracket, we can go ahead and attach that main sensor itself. And this just takes two screws. After the main unit is all attached, we will start on the upstream damping material, assuming that the air is flowing from left to right. Again, start at one corner, work your way down, and then you can attach the mounting bracket for the damping material. For the upstream or downstream damping material, doesn't matter so much about alignment. So just fit the bracket around the damping material, make sure that it's relatively lined up, and then you're good to tighten the screws. Again, pay a lot of attention to do a really good job tightening these screws. If one screw is even a half turn looser than the others, it can sometimes affect the stability on the FDG. After this, we'll repeat the process with the downstream damping material. And whenever you're finished, it might look something like this. Again, the orientation of the upstream and downstream material doesn't matter so much, but it does matter for the main unit damping material. What we just saw was an example of installing the FDG on a one inch pipe. If you're using a larger size of piping, I recommend watching one of the videos that just popped up on the screen to see an example of the installation for your pipe size. Now that we have the FDG mounted to the pipe, we just need to cover the settings that you'll need to enter to get the sensor working correctly. When you power on the sensor for the first time, you'll need to complete the initial settings before the sensor will operate. Enter the language you want to use, and then input the date and time 
according to the format that you see on the screen. It's important that you enter this information correctly because it is applied to the automatic data recording function on the FDG. For the integration direction, you will always choose standard unless you installed the FDG on a pipe loop, in which case the gas could flow in either direction. If this is your situation, go ahead and choose the bi-directional option. Next, you've got to choose the direction with which the gas is flowing through the meter. The direction in the settings uses the rectangular connector that links the sensor head to the sensing element as a point of reference. The direction of the gas flow is either from the top of the sensor towards the cable or from the cable towards the top of the sensor. Now you need to enter the general size of the pipe the FDG is mounted to. If you're unsure, you can measure the outer diameter of the pipe and then use this chart on the screen to match the measured outer diameter to the nominal pipe sizes so that you can make the correct selection. After this, you'll see some options for piping standards that your pipes could be made to. If you're certain which of these applies to your piping, that's great and you can choose the correct standard which informs the FDG of the accurate wall thickness and outer diameter of the piping, which is going to be important for stable and accurate detection. If you're unsure at this stage, I would go ahead and choose the ASTM US just for now and I'll show you how to input the exact OD and thickness of the pipe later in this video. On the flow unit screen, only metric units are unlocked at first. To add CFM as an option, hold the mode button and the right arrow at the same time for 3 seconds, and then turn the additional measurement units on. After this, you'll be able to choose CFM as a flow rate measurement unit. If you select it on for additional measurement units, you will be able to select the pressure unit and the temperature unit you'd like to use as well. If you did not turn additional measurement units on, the meter will auto-select kilopascals and Celsius for the units. Next, you can choose what type of conversion the FDG performs on the flow rate it detects inside of the pipe. There are two options if you'd like the FDG to perform a conversion, normal or standard. Normal conversion will convert the flow rate measured inside the pipe to what the flow rate would be if the pressure inside the pipe was atmospheric pressure and the temperature was 0 degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Standard conversion is a bit different from the normal conversion because instead of assuming that 0 degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit is the reference temperature, now you can specify whatever reference temperature you'd like. If you use either of the conversion options, the FDG will ask you to input a pressure. Unlike the temperature setting we could input before, if you selected standard conversion. This pressure represents the pressure inside of the pipe, not some imaginary conversion value. You can manually input the pressure inside of your piping if you know what it will be during operation and if it doesn't vary too much. Or you can tie a 4 to 20 milliamp input from a pressure sensor via the M8 port on the right side of the FDG display so that it always knows the pressure inside of the piping system. To wrap up the initial settings, you just need to tell the meter what type of inputs and outputs you want it to use. If you are only using the Ethernet function on the meter, you will probably just need to leave this off. But if you are using the meter as a flow switch or connecting it to a PLC or data logger via the 4 to 20 milliamp signal, you can select that here. Side note. If you are just using the analog output and don't care about any of the digital inputs or outputs, you will still have to choose an NPN or PNP setting, but that does not matter which one you choose because it doesn't affect the analog output on the FDG. Once you are happy with the settings, you can end the configuration and the sensor will take you to its main display. At this point, if you've correctly followed the steps in this video so far, and you've checked off all of the requirements for stable detection covered earlier, then you should have a stable reading. However, if you notice anything strange, or if you are using a unique gas mixture or unique type of piping, I want to show you how to adjust the gas and pipe settings on the FDG.
First, tap on the square menu key and select the general settings option. Then select the detection settings option. Scroll down to the advanced detection settings and select the show option. Now you can scroll down to see the pipe and gas settings. For pipe material, there are two options, steel or stainless steel. As a general rule of thumb, if a pipe is magnetic, you should choose steel. And if it is not magnetic, you should choose stainless steel. If you are using the FDG on an aluminum pipe, go ahead and choose stainless steel here. If you turn on the advanced pipe settings, you will be able to input the exact outer diameter of the pipe you're using and the exact thickness of that pipe. Below this, you can change the gas type to input and then enter the specific heat ratio and the molecular weight of the exact gas or mixture of gases you are using, which will help ensure accurate readings. This information can be commonly found online if you are unsure of what to enter. Beyond this, there should be no other settings you need to mess with to ensure stable and accurate detection. If you are noticing that you are having poor stability on the FDG, indicated by the Wi-Fi lookalike bars at the top left of the various display screens, then you can try to increase the response time setting found at the top of the detection settings. If this doesn't help, I would revisit that list of requirements needed to ensure stable operation that was covered at the beginning of this video. One of these is likely not met, which is causing that lack of stability. In closing, now that your sensor is installed and set up correctly to detect the airflow inside of the pipe, I would advise you to check out the I.O. settings if you are using the digital I.O. or the analog output, and then also to check out the function settings so that you can see what additional functions you could use to add value to your flow monitoring setup. If you have any questions about the different settings or functions from this point forward, please refer to the FDG user's manual. Chapter six describes the overall gist and then the nuances of each setting or function on the FDG. If you have any questions about the FDG and would like to speak to somebody about it, please call 888-539-3623 and press two to get in touch with Keyence's technical support team.